I've spent a decade taking a bite out of conspiracy theories, unraveling urban legends, and grappling with worldwide top secret issues. I've even racked up some of their awards. Wow, I mean, first of all, what a question. Journalism is about telling the truth, all while ferreting out the bottom line. Uh-oh, I'm a Harrison Hellraiser. My mission is to inform viewers who want to get to the truth within the unknown on all topics, controversial, bizarre, and taboo. Wow. You've taught generations how to view the world in a yes. positive way. Yes, I have. I know that, and your humility is the part that's really exciting. Interviewing movers and shakers, agitators and muckrakers. But that doesn't answer my question. That is all I'm answering. With me as your guide. In his first interview in 10 years, Olympic gold medal champion Ionis Icarus Melisanidis is going to talk to us today about not only being an Olympic champion and how he got from A to B, part of what you represent is open-mindedness. When you took me to Poseidon's temple, and by the way, I brought a souvenir, mm -hmm. these olive leaves, where you pointed out rightly, these trees are thousands of years old. Imagine what they've seen. And and have heard, <laughs> yes. Yes. yes, right, right. Well, yeah, from great philosophers, uh, great poets, uh, beautiful athletes, amazing. I mean, even to think about it, it's, ooh, yeah, it's beautiful. And Poseidon Temple is one of, you know, it's their location. It's so beautiful and powerful. It's the location also that King Aegean, uh, unfortunately, committed suicide because he was expecting his uh, son, uh, Jason, from Crete. When he killed Minotaur, he killed it. He killed a minotaur, but he forgot to change the sailings from black into white. So King Aegean, unfortunately, was very disappointed and very unhappy. So that's why he committed suicide from that part, uh, place, from the, king, uh, from the uh, Poseidon Temple. Yeah. And, and one of the things that you've done for, if you've never been to the Acropolis, which was really my first tour, the private tour, the only tour, happened to be a private tour. <laughs> if you haven't been, this is the Parthenon. This is the extraordinary seat of the most incredible architecture. Look at our Capitol building. Look at every major city in the world. Berlin. Berlin. White yes, House. Very, very much so, right? <laughs> I mean, this is duplicated architecture. But more interestingly, you know, we have the story of Lord Elgin, who came in and took these incredible statues that are thousands of years old, took them to the British Museum, and part of what you want to do for the people of Greece is bring them back. The reunification of the Parthenon marbles yeah. and also great uh, stars from all over the world, including George Clooney, recently yes. after his uh, 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 not last movie but the previous one, um, uh, he he did a Monuments powerful man. monument. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, he did a very powerful statements about the reunification of the Parthenon marbles because the uh, the temple of uh, the Acropolis is it's the, is, is a symbol of democracy of the philosophies, the birthplace. Greece is the birthplace, and Athens the birthplace of democracy. And then Lord El Elgin, during the um, uh, Turkish occupation, um, <laughs> he did something very, very... Um, Naughty. Yes, under the table. So in less than 48 hours, he took these unofficial, official, uh, black... Uh, uh, um, okay from uh, the, 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 the leader of the Turkish, uh, the Passas. So she took all this, be most of the be these beautiful, extraordinary sculptures for the Parthenon in a very brutal, brutal way. And these don't weigh uh, 10 ounces or five pounds. These things weigh yes. a ton. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and at some point he bankrupt personally, and then he sold those beautiful, outstanding sculptures to the British Museum, to the British government, and uh, with a request to name after them. So can you imagine, that? because his excuse, and still the excuse of the British Museum, is that, uh, well, we saved them from the Turkish and from, you know, blah, blah, blah. So the worst thing that happened all these centuries was by him, not by the Turkish, not by the Italians, but by the Lord Elgin. And having this generous diplomatic vanity that you want to offer those with money, of course, from the, uh, receiving money from the uh, British government, and name after you those uh, beautiful sculptures, Elgin marbles or Elgin sculptures, that means something. I mean, even we, Phidias and Callicrates, those great yeah. minds that they create as beautiful sculptures, right. that, they didn't name after them. 
well, that's something that we have to fight, we have to stand up, and I have to thank the British people that more than 82%, 80%, maybe 4% of them, they really request from the British government uh, the reunification of the Parthenon Marbles. Thank you, British. We love you. Right. And here you have the British Museum saying, well, you see, we have these lovely statues, <laughs> thousands of years old. Why, it would be a tragic voyage on a ship to take them back to Greece. They're having their issues after all, and we can't really trust them to... And the fact is that everybody on Earth wants the Acropolis, the Parthenon, these amazing statues throughout history, these ones that we grew up in storybooks with all the, the Greek mythology that we've been taught in school. These are the actual sculptures. So do you think this is going to happen within your lifetime or within a number of years? We're fighting, we're fighting for it. Mm -hmm. And they, they belong to, to, uh, to the to, to, to Greece, they were, I mean... To the th humans, I to think, the hum really. Well, they, yeah. they belong to humans, yeah, yeah. But the place that, you know, um, matches perfectly is... Yeah. It's, it's out, it's, they're not outstanding pieces of art. It's, um, it's an entire... Uh, Integrated. Yes. Yes. So it's... Um, and it's... Uh, can you imagine, like, if a British that is very, you know, proud for the big band that, you know, you have one piece here and one piece there. And, no, I mean, not, not to mention the comparison between the Acropolis and the yeah. big band. Yeah. You know, we were, like, 2,500 yeah, yeah, years... Yeah. Uh, yeah. And... But still, it's like, if you... If the people can imagine this comparison. I mean, the British would say, well, no, we want our big band, blah, 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 blah. And we, they are a member of the EU. We are a member of the EU. I mean, come on. And 83% of your citizens yeah. kindly request yeah. the reunification of the Parthen Marbles. So we are fighting for it and we're going to make it. To put it into perspective so that it makes sense to us uh, here in America, and of course if you're watching this anywhere in the world, you'll have your own domestic stuff that you would be able to connect as a way of understanding this. It'd be as if uh, the Canadians took the Liberty Bell or the uh, Statue to of Liberty, Liberty yeah. went to Mexico and they cut it up into pieces and sold it off to various families and said, well, this is actually the Statue of Liberty. You say, well, I think it's part of her shoe. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean the same thing. So it's the same kind of theft in a way, well, in a real way. Uh, it's part of all of our history, the seat of human democracy. I'm going to say that again. The <laughs> seat of human democracy happening in Greece and taking that apart. So it has a much bigger statement. With this way, yes. and Kerry, I mean, when Lord Legend under the table with this very uh, dark diplomatic way took these sculptures back to, you know, UK. And when he bankrupted, bankrupted, he, he... He went bankrupt. Uh, yes. He, so he yes. sold them to the yes, British Museum yes, for, yeah. for a little cash. Yes. And for a cup of tea and <laughs> during of conversation. Tea. <laughs> yes. Sorry. They will come back. Well, one of the interesting things to always talk about is, is courage and strength. It takes courage and strength for you to stand up for these, especially given your connection to the Olympics and all the rest of it. Um, there are so many people in your world that depend on you, whose reputations are loosely connected to yours. So when you stand up for something, it might affect them over here. It takes a lot of courage. And you have a good reputation because you always stand up for the right things. At least this is the history we see with you. At least what is right for me. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a young man and uh, I vote. So when I vote, I do have the right to speak. Um, coming from Greece, the birthplace of democracy, uh, it's in my blood. I have to demonstrate when it's necessary to demonstrate. I have to stand up and say no when I think that it's no. But if it's yes, of course, we have to, it's beautiful to have a nice debate and dialogue. Another beautiful Greek word, by the way. So it's, yes, you ha we, we the young people have to stand up yeah. um, with a very nice and liberal way and say yes when it's yes and no when it's no. We have to fight for our rights and for the freedom of speech. As an homage, I wore my Spartan t-shirt. Yes. Just for you. This is Sparta. That's cool. That's cool. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Ionis Icarus Melissanides gold medal Olympic winner, first interview in 10 years. This has been a gourmet meal, a banquet of information and good clean fun. And look forward to having you back on again, Del. Thank you. I want to invite you on a one-time only special trip to be one of the first people to sail to Cuba in 50 years. 
with interior cabins for a week-long five-star luxury cruise ship voyage around the entire island of Cuba with multiple port calls starting at only $16.98. Be among the first in 50 years to see Cuba while it's still the Cuba that people talk about.